welcome to Costume Corner for this the month of February. We're here with a, another grandiose project for all of you. Um, I make it sound much bigger than it is. I mean, it, oh, it's no. neat. I like it's it. It's extremely cool. So, uh, we've already discussed uh, one type of armor piece last month, and that was, of course, the Force Field Shields. You might yes. remember that. So cool. This month, we're going to be expanding our repertoire and making an armor piece out of... Well, we're going to be making bracers. Mm-hmm. See, just like this. So we're going to turn shin guards into bracers. Yes. Which you can use as, you know, some part of armor. In this mm-hmm. case, it's designed to be post-apocalyptic, so it definitely looks like it's been through the ringer a little bit. Uh-huh. I want to make some um, Wonder Woman mm-hmm. versions of these. Yeah, absolutely. That's you know? the thing is you can modify them quite a bit. So yeah. this model will just be kind of a base model. And of course it, it'll look a little bit more scavenged, mm-hmm. which is the which is kind of the point in this case. Yeah, totally. So yeah, uh, to get started, let me first of all go over what's going to be in your kit. Perfect. One, shin guard. Um, if you have a shin guard already, feel free to use it. Mm-hmm. I will just keep in mind, don't use a shin guard you want to use to protect your shins because... <laughs> Once you've done this, once you've made the project out of this, I would not recommend using it as any sort of protective equipment. Yes. So just keep that in mind. Good idea. So then you will have some small zip ties. Mm -hmm. Um, These are fairly short. And so, you know, they're pretty small, um, but you don't really need them to be all that big for this project. Okay. Um, If you have really big ones already, too, you can feel free to use them. You just will have to cut them down more. Uh, You'll have a pair of Velcro straps that definitely stick together very well. (laughs) Um, So, you know, kind of like that. And you're going to have some brackets. So these are going to help us make sure that the strips will wrap around the uh, wrap around the bracer, and then that way you can actually attach it to your arm. Cool. So a few other tools that will not be included in your kit, okay. but that you're probably going to want. Uh-huh. Uh, this is another one where you're going to want a power drill. Awesome. Um, Aha! You're going to want <laughs> a craft knife or utility knife, something like that. Terrifying. True. Um, <laughs> somebody's trusting me with a knife. This is going to be a great project. Mm-hmm. Um, a Sharpie or just other marker, so that way you can mark out where you're going to be drilling. And finally, perhaps a pair of scissors uh, makes it easier to cut down the zip ties once you're ready for that. Awesome. So yeah, those are our materials. And then after we make the bracer itself, I'll also show you how to decorate it so it looks a lot more like this one. Cool. To get started though, um, as always, safety first. So we are going to be using the drill. Mm -hmm. There are two things that you'll want with the drill, Mm -hmm. a face mask or other covering, Mm -hmm. and a pair of safety goggles. Nice. So yeah, the safety goggles, of course, go over your eyes, Mm -hmm. the mask over your mouth. Yes. Um, You probably know how to do this by now, but you know. Uh. Is it maybe it's maybe? <laughs> I was definitely not born with it, so. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then I'm going to put these on. So that way we're nice and safe. Uh-huh. So, unlike the last project, this is actually going to be larger bits that you're going to be worried about uh-huh. because this is a thicker grade of plastic. I see. As well as uh, foam padding. Uh-huh. So. You're in less danger of breathing stuff in accidentally and more in danger of just something flying into your eye, um, which is not great. Mm -mm. Do not recommend. So the next bit then is you're gonna flip it over so you have the padded side Mm -hmm. and then take your marker and mark a couple of points uh, near the edge where you're gonna want to drill. So I'm gonna mark two points probably here and then something a little further down. So there. And you're gonna do the same thing basically uh, three more times because you're gonna want a total of four of these um, brackets. Cool.
Another thing too that I like to do is just cut off the tag here. Um, it voids the warranty, but you know, <laughs> I think drilling a hole into it's going to void the warranty too. So maybe. So once we're done there, uh -huh. uh, we drill the holes that we marked. Yes. And I recommend drilling from the padded side out because. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Lisa. Um, I recommend drilling from the padded side out, and I will drill directly toward Liesel's face. Um, <laughs> and uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. No. Um, Russ, but just kidding. Yeah, I'm a semi-trained quasi-professional, and don't you forget it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. Safety. So now that uh, everything's nice and safe, I can see I've got our stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to drill eight holes. So each one of the points we marked. Mm -hmm. So do do do. That's the thing is that the padding doesn't offer much resistance at all and the plastic's actually a much better, it's a less stiff material Yeah. because it's designed to bend and flex so that way nice. it deflects stuff rather than, yeah. you know, makes you absorb it with your shins. Cool, cool. I blocked it with my shin. I regretted it. <laughs> is that a Simpsons reference? No, I just was thinking of that. I don't know. It could be a reference to something, but I don't know if it is. So the other interesting thing to note too is um, as far as the drill bit itself is concerned, you really only need to have something that's slightly thicker than the zip ties you're using. It doesn't actually matter too much. Mm -hmm. But if you have something that's much thicker, it's fine because it's not actually going to disrupt anything. Mm, okay. So as long as it doesn't go like, you know, through the entire like side there. Yeah. It needs to... Uh I have to attach to something. Exactly, yeah. So there we go. Okay, I finally went and got my gear so I can come back on screen. Now with all eight holes drilled, um, I'm going to go on ahead and take off my gear. <laughs> if you well, wanna, I guess I have to do mine. So. I was about to say, if you want to drill yours. Yes. Because the cool thing about this is that it's going to be heavier particles, so they're not going to fly super far. Right. They're just, you know, if they do fly somewhere, they're going to fly toward your face, and that's not great. And then you may notice uh, what I'm doing over here is I'm just cleaning off some of the holes by maybe carving off. So you may notice that like up close, there's these little bits of plastic that are still attached. Um, you can just get that off with a utility knife or a craft knife or um, technically a pair of scissors might work. And so, yeah, I'm just going to be cutting those off basically just so that way they're not there when I'm doing the painting. However, if you would rather just have these extra bits on to make it look even more post-apocalyptic, go for it. As long as they don't pinch you or anything. True. Fortunately, these are on the outside, so hopefully they shouldn't be. But, you know, True. you never know, though. Sometimes things will just progress. I mean, ask, you know, Mad Max what he thinks about how things progress. In the apocalypse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just ask him about baseball scores usually. About what? Baseball scores. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> it's like, Ross, it's not even baseball season right now. <laughs> in the apocalypse, who would know? Well, it, and then in the apocalypse, who knows? Maybe they've changed when baseball season is. <laughs> Maybe that's why the apocalypse happened. Maybe that is why the apocalypse even happened. We, we just couldn't stand baseball season being in February. <laughs> 
And if you think about it, like this is something that would absolutely exist in the apocalypse. True. I mean, people are going to try to find all sorts of different ways to try to protect themselves. Yeah. I mean, this isn't, you know, so first of all, another word of warning, don't expect this to be like some sort of realistic armor or something. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't recommend, you know, this is still a costume piece. This is not like, you know, battle armor. So, um, so you're telling them not to go into real life battle? Yes. With this? But yeah, no, d- this is for sure not real armor. So at this point, we honestly could begin the assembly. Um mm-hmm. If you're fine with it looking just like, hey, I went to a sporting goods store, bought some, or grabbed a, you know, um, appropriated a shin guard, and now I have armor, Mm -hmm. um, that's perfectly fine. Totes. But, in a little bit here, I'm going to teach you how to make it look like it's been through an apocalypse or two. Because you may notice this one isn't the same color. And looks a lot older. Um, hey. And it's not. Cool. I actually painted this today. Yeah. So I will show you how to make this look uh, yourself without having to go through an apocalypse to get it. I have. Don't ask me when. Are you, are you a time traveler? I'm not not a time traveler. <laughs> I'm not a time traveler either, though. That's exactly what a time traveler would say. <laughs> well, exactly. you know. That's verbatim what a time traveler would say. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to hide my DeLorean. I mean, I'm going to have to uh, do better about, you know, convincing people that I am not a time traveler. So we head I believe to so. our next destination. So in a moment here, we're going to use the power of movie magic once again. Mm. To go back to our favorite spot, which is outside the library. I didn't really want to give away, you know, the magic there, but it is just out back of the library. Oh. Yeah. Until uh, we get back to you in a moment, it'll be like no time at all passed for you. All right. So welcome to the outside world here. Yay! Um, So, of course, as... Any time that we're going to use spray paint, I'm going to highly recommend you go outside if you can. Um, if not, and you have to do it inside, make sure that it is a high ceiling, well ventilated area. Yes. Because you definitely don't want to be stuck in a small confined space with a lot of spray paint flying around. Correct. That is not good for you. Outside is best. So, but yes, outside is absolutely the best. And, uh, you know, just anywhere outside. Uh, as usual, I'm using a bit of cardboard because we want to make sure we don't get the paint on the ground. Yes. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, take the plastic side, leave that up. Mm-hmm. You can put it <clears throat> in the box. Yes. And for the first coat, I'm going to give it a pretty good dowsing. Okay. Um, just because this is more so we can get the base color across. Look at it go. Mm -hmm. How fun. And you'll know that it should be good when you can no longer see the stripes, um, like the black stripes on there. Got it. All right, I think we should be good for our first coat, so now we have to wait for it to dry. Six and a half hours later. All right, time for step two. Oh. So now that our bracer is mostly dry, yes. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put a thin coat again on it. Okay. Um, so this just takes a moment. And you don't actually have to put a lot this time, just kind of maybe a ah. piece sprays. Okay. And then I'm using, um, a bag of cement here, yes. but you can use dirt, um, dust, whatever you've got. Honestly, cool. it doesn't matter too much. Yeah. I'm going to pour a little bit into my hand. And then we're just going to sprinkle that over just like that. Oh, cool. And then we wait a bit for that to dry. I'll nice. take off the excess. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, we should be good from there. <laughs> And we're back. <laughs> Ta-da! I know, magic. Um, so, yeah, now that we're back and ready to go, um, we have our finished painted project. 
So we still have one more step to do. We need to make sure we have all the attachments on it so that way we can, you know, actually wear it. Um, it does look pretty cool, though, I have to say. <laughs> I'm I think so excited. It's like, it looks like it's like the beginning of the apocalypse. Like, uh -huh. you just got started with it, yeah. you know? Yeah, So it's like the opening scenes of the Mad Max exactly. movie. Exactly, like, exactly. You know, he's still got, like, a nice car and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, you can tell I watched a lot of Mad Max growing up. No. I've only seen Fury Road. Fair enough. Because yeah. Charlize Theron. True. Um, I will say they're generally really good movies. Yeah. Um, honestly, I even actually kind of like Beyond Thunderdome. I know that's like forbidden, not the best one. Um, but I gotta say, honestly, like I know that it's kind of silly, but Tina Turner she does a good job. Okay, so, yeah. noted. At the very least, the beginning of that movie is really good. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. What we are going to use next is our zip ties. Mm -hmm. So for each hole, you'll want to stick the zip tie through. Mm -hmm. And you'll need a total of eight of them. So uh -huh. let me get you some more of those. Thank you. So that should be three, four, five, six... Seven and eight, including the one that's already in there. Actually, you know, let me show this up yes. close a yeah. bit, if I may. There is that. Yeesh. So the cool part, too, is that the holes will actually um, keep the zip ties in mostly, um, I say, <laughs> as one of them falls out. And, uh, yeah, from there, what you're going to need to do is take one of these. Oop, one of these. And you're going to loop it through two of them, mm -hmm. and then zip tie it closed is what Lisa was about to do, which is exactly what you were supposed to do. Awesome. So, there you go. Why, thank you. I will let you do the honors. Marvelous. And here's so also excited. three more brackets. Thank you. You're welcome. <gasps> it's happening. I know, right? It's pretty exciting. And, of course, uh, you can have them go either behind or in front of the bracer. I chose to have mine go behind, so that way I maximize the surface of, you know, the protective area. But uh, Mine are in front. That's totally cool, too. I think both look good. Yes, they do. So. <laughs> Zip ties are also just satisfying to They close. really are! So I'm having such a good time. <laughs> The best part is, too, if you ever need to replace them, I mean, you just cut it off, put on a new one. They're super cheap. I yeah. think a pack of, like, how many were these? A um, hundred cost me about four bucks. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, you you can you know, you can easily get a whole bunch of zip ties. Um, <clears throat> these are rated for outdoor use, but honestly, oh. I don't think it really matters. So maybe you could go into that. Maybe. Yep. You know, it would be really fun to see, like, a uh, apocalyptic show or movie that took place in medieval times. Hmm, that would be interesting. Like yeah. a zombie apocalypse yeah, but in medieval like, times. But, yeah, you know, you have, like, a, you know, a guy with a crossbow, and that's actually, like, the best weapon available. It's not right. just, you know, like, Daryl is, like, kind of... An unusual right. guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. So now to uh, show another perhaps close-up look once okay. it's done there, you'll see that uh, Liesel's tied these off um, you know, just right there. So that way uh -huh. we've got some nice convenient holes uh -huh. that we can put straps into. Yes. Uh, the other thing, too, is you can actually cut off the ties at the end if you want to. Yes. Um, you don't actually have to, but, you know. I'm gonna. I think it looks better if yeah. you do. It'll look really cool. Uh, here's some scissors. So oh, thank you. I was hiding them. You were. Yes. Sneaky, like sneaky. That. Yeah. So really, the only other part here is that you'll take the Velcro straps that came in your kit and you'll slide one through two of the uh, two of the you know little brackets um, and yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, well, that actually could, that actually is a better idea than what I was doing. <laughs> huh. Huh. Very nice. There we go. And now we have a bracer ready to go for combat, ready to uh, help protect you in that post-apocalyptic wasteland, uh -huh. also known as, I don't know, 
The library. The library, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that one, that post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's actually really clever. So, yeah, I'm going to stick the arm through here. <laughs> so, yeah, I think. Well, actually, so oh. what you can also do is if you take this and mm -hmm. go right through here, mm -hmm. and you bring it all the way down like that. Oh, uh. It has to go the opposite way, though. Uh. So, See, I was doing it wrong. If we flip it around. This is why we have Liesl here, so she can fix the project. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's like nice oh. and tight on here. Sorry, I thought I was like moving it and then I made it slip. So. No. Well, I'll be. That was amazing. All right. <laughs> Very cool. So, yeah, I'm going to do the other strap here real quick. So oh. then, for the front one, mm -hmm. what a did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> here, do you want to take it off for a minute? Uh, yeah. Was, I put this through both mm -hmm. of them. And then put this through like this mm. and like that. And then your wrist goes through there. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, so, I don't know if you want to show them how to do that. Pretty much any way that you can get it stuck to your arm is true. the way to do it. This is very true. Yes. And of course, you might have, uh, like, you know, access to some other Velcro straps that you'd like to use instead, which you're welcome to do so. Just because it came in your kit doesn't mean you have to use it. Um, nice. <laughs> We gotta get you a second one. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I'm just gonna wear this all the time. Yeah, sounds good. It's a great conversation starter. It really know. is. Oh, this old thing? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So yeah, there we go. Woo! Ta-da! All right, awesome. Well, um, yeah, and then that is your bracer. Uh, make sure to, you know, well, brace. wear it well. Uh, brace for impact. Yes. And then, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so the cool thing, too, is that you can use this technique for a lot of similar projects, depending Absolutely. on what sort of pieces you have. Um, if you have access to anything from, like, football pads or... Oh, my gosh, I absolutely. Mean, <clears throat> Or even like elbow pads, knee pads, stuff like that. Um, you can yeah. do this exact same technique and get the same result. Um, and honestly, just make yourself look like that post-apocalyptic warrior you always wanted to be. And um, you are. And you, that you are. are. You're a survivor. Been. Yes. You're a survivor. That's a copyright. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us this month for Caution Corner. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next month yes. with a brand new project. Always so, exciting. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Woo. Technical difficulties. Beep. <laughs>